Hi everyone, my name is Tina and welcome to Real Talk with Resale Royalty. I'm so excited that you're here today. We are going to break down the psychology of a person that sends a low ball offer. You might be asking yourself, why am I getting these low ball offers? We're going to talk about that today because I'm getting them too. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So glad you're here. Thank you for returning. Today, I just found out I'm up to 100 subscribers, which sounds really small, but it's exciting for me. Um, 100 people want to hear what I say, but that's really neat. Um, so thank you so much for each and every one of you. I value you all. I appreciate your feedback and your comments below. It lets me know um, the answered questions I leave in our, my videos. Like sometimes I really just don't know this stuff and I want to know and I love that we have an amazing reseller community where we support one another. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's another 200 and at 250, I have a really cool giveaway plan. So make sure you're staying tuned for that. Okay, let's talk about what I refer to as low ballers. The people on all of our platforms that send low ball offers. Oh my gosh, okay. Why are you getting lowball offers? Why am I getting lowball offers? We all get them. When I first started reselling, I remember I was like just devastated because I kept giving these low lowball offers and I thought, is there something I'm doing wrong? Is it just me? And when I heard other resellers on YouTube mention lowball offers, I was like, oh my gosh, it's not just me. Thank God someone else is talking about this. So recently, like last week recently, I had no exaggeration here, you guys, four straight days of repeated low ball offers, never from the same person, never on the same platform, just ridiculous low ball offers for four days straight. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, we all get them occasionally, you know, no big deal, but to get them repeatedly, like what is causing this to happen? Now, if you're new here, let me just back up a little bit. I'm a part-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Macari, Etsy, and currently on ThreadUp, but reclaiming my boxes. Um, so I sell on various platforms. You know, there are different people that shop on these platforms. Um, and I love being a reseller. I have a full-time job as well, a nine-to-five job as a sociologist in a crisis care clinic. So... Being the sociologist that I am, it's my job and my discipline, we study behavior patterns when one or two people interact. So anytime there's some type of engagement, what we try to research and study is, why is their behavior that way? Why do they act that way? And I think, you know, a lot of us wonder about a lot of people, <laughs> why do they act the way they act? So when I saw this pattern forming, I said, why do people send low ball offers on any of these platforms? Why do they do it? So I started breaking it down. And this is purely observational. It's my perspective on what I think is happening. Um, but I have, have actually had some chat messages on like Macari, you can do the chat message and on eBay. And I've actually, the last couple of days, I chatted with them. And we talked about the pricing because I kind of I wanted to know where they're coming from. Now, it's kind of a joke with my friends and my coworkers that know me because I'm the person that will ask somebody anything. And I'm always impressed with the fact that people typically will answer honestly. If you ask things that you're like, that's so bizarre, like why we should ask them that. OK, and I'll go ask because I really am curious. I want to know. So I asked a few of my buyers and they ended up buying the items too, but I did have a conversation asked, I'm just curious, what about this listing makes you think that $10 is a good price? Not to be offensive in any way, because I'm willing to negotiate, but I just want to know, like, why did you set your initial price at $10 when you asked me, when you sent the offer? Um, so I did get some feedback that way. And just based off of my observations, this is what I came up with. Number one, the number one reason why people are low ballers, why they send mobile offers to us is because they're probably new to the platform. It's that simple. They probably really don't understand, especially Poshmark. Poshmark is really kind of hard to figure out. When I first went on Poshmark, it was as a shopper. And 
I was just like, well, it says this, do I make an offer? So if I like this shirt, it's $30. If I'm going to make an offer on it, well, I'd like to pay $10 for it, but they have it listed at 30. People just aren't educated on the way the reselling business works. They don't know what someone feels like is acceptable or not acceptable. So always keep that in mind. It's hard. I was clearly frustrated when it was happening to me repeatedly. I know you're probably feeling frustrated when it happens to you because everybody goes, what in the world are these people thinking? I think it's just that they don't know. A lot of people have never made an offer on a platform like this, or they found the item on Google and they followed the link and it took them to Poshmark or eBay, Macari, whatever. And they don't know how this works. I will tell you one feature I really love, and that's on Macari. And I will also tell you, I don't get lowball offers on Macari. Never have. I'll get chat messages where they try to see if I'll bring down my price, but I don't get lowball offers. And I'm going to tell you why. If you list on Macari, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But when you shop on Macari, there you like an item, you go look at it and you think about purchasing, you know, you can click a purchase now, or I don't remember how it's worded, but um, there's also the option to make an offer on the item right there, especially on the app, at least there's right there, a button to, to just make an offer. Now, when you click that button and you go to set your price, it will say it has that little, you know, green area, red area, like the arrow and red means not likely. The person is not likely to accept your offer. It's too low. So if you do like 10%, 20%, it says, well, 10%, highly likely, 20%, eh, there's a chance. And as you drop the price of your offer even more, it says the, the uh, seller is not likely to take the offer this low. Thank you, Makari, that you thought of that. Thank you. Because that saves me a lot of time. And for someone who just really doesn't have the knowledge, doesn't know, they see that they're like, oh, okay, then. I'm not going to send that offer because it's probably not going to get accepted. That saves us both the time. So I love that feature, Macari. I really wish Poshmark would accept that feature in their platform. Come on, Poshmark, catch up. So yeah, that's the number one reason. They probably really just don't know how this whole thing works. So be patient. Maybe send them a comment on a bundle for that item. Put that item in a bundle. Say, hey, you know, such and such. I saw you like the item. The offer you sent is actually it's too low. I can't accept that offer at that price. Um, but my lowest price would be $20 or whatever. And either they take it or they don't. But at least you're communicating and trying to find out, did they just not know? I have done this before. And the person said, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I feel terrible. A lot of times that's really, it's really innocent. It's what it is. Um, there was one time that I made an offer because I shop on these platforms too all the time. And I made an offer on an item that I saw pop up um, and I sent the offer. It was like 10% off. That was it. You know, I know how to set an offer because I'm on the other side of things. And the lady met was kind enough to message me back instead of just ignore me and ghosting me. And she said, I'm so sorry, but I actually just lowered the price today. And that's the final price. It's the lowest price I can take. I said, thank you for communicating with me, no problem. And I accepted the price and went and purchased it. Because I get that. When you set it to your final price, you don't want to keep making offers on that. Or sorry, you don't want to keep um, accepting lower prices. So for my closet, what I do is if I've set it at my lowest price, which means I'll probably be relisting it soon. But if I set it at my lowest price, I put in bold letters, capitals, final buy it now price. So that people know if you like it, I'm not going to send an offer. It's a buy now price. You know, don't expect that to happen. I'm not being rude, but I've just, I've already got it set at the lowest. So that kind of helps people too, that they don't have to sit there and wonder. Okay. Number two, number two reason why low ballers low ball is because they think that this online platform is like a yard sale or a garage sale. That's their idea going into it. A lot of people like, I saw a recent commercial by Macari that kind of promoted Macari that way and said, hey, it's kind of like going to a garage sale, but it's an online garage sale. So that's interesting. So if people are seeing that marketed that way, they might go there thinking, hey, when I go to a garage sale, what do I do? 
I never accept the price that's listed. It, this item is for a dollar. I say, would you take 50 cents? Sure. They just want to get rid of the stuff, right? So they're like, yes, take it. 50 cents is good. A lot of times if I'm buying, and I haven't been yard selling in a while, but I'm going this weekend. I'm so excited. Anyway, so if I'm buying in bulk, like lots of clothing, I'll say, hey, instead of 50 cents a piece, can I put get a whole pile of stuff and give you one bulk price? They say yes, because they want to move the things out. So if people go into this with the mentality that this is like just an online yard sale, they're going to negotiate and take a low price because they just want to move this product out, which we really do want to sell it, but we're not desperate for the sale. And that's the difference. So if people are used to going garage selling and yard selling, they're bargain hunters, they're used to never accepting the price that it's listed at anywhere then you're, that's why they're doing the low, low ball offers because they think, okay, I'm going to go at my lowest price and see what they say. Um, and then, so here's the thing. When someone sends a low ball offer, I would highly recommend, it's what I do. I know a lot of people do it too. Counter offer, send a counter offer. Don't say, are you out of your mind? Just get out of here. I feel like doing that, but I don't. I always send a counter offer with my lowest acceptable price that I would take for the item. See if we can meet in the middle somewhere. Um, and then I see how they respond. If there's somebody that's just looking for that desperate buy or desperate sell, I mean, um, if they're just looking for, you know, real quick, low price item, like a garage seller, um, they just ghost. They don't even respond to the counter. They just go on away. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, it really irritates me when it's a new tagged item. And I'm like, come on now. Like, I'm not going to give you this. Okay. For instance, um, I have, I have to bring this up. I have a Kate Somerville. Um, it's like retina uh, eye cream. Um, I love Kate Somerville products. It's what I primarily use for my skincare routine. And it is expensive. It is, I never pay under $50 for anything that I use. So I go into it knowing I'm going to pay a high price for this product, but I know it's a good product and I want it and I don't care. Okay. So one time I went to Marshall's a couple months ago and they had a couple K Somerville items on clearance. And I was like, Ooh, I know other people like it as much as I do. Let me grab it. So I got one for myself and one to sell. And this item sells for, I want to say $128 for the, it's a standard size, not sample. Um, I think it's $128. So I got it for a good price. I was like, okay, I'm going to put it up. I have had so many offers on this, many of them low, low, low. And I'm like, no, I'm not selling it to you for $20. New in the box costs 128 right now retail. And you want me to sell it for $20. Sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, so the lowest I've gone is $42 on it, which is a really good price. I know I buy the stuff at retail. That's a great price. And I refuse to go under that. Um, you're getting a bargain at $42. But anyway, the point is people consistently send me low ball offers. And when I try to counter, they just go, so they just, never mind, decline. And I'm like, okay, it'll sit there for the person that wants it. Or maybe by the time I get done with my little package of it, I'll need another one and I'll just use it. So um, we'll see. But yeah, those are situations that really do get under my skin when I'm like, come on, you know, if you buy these products that they are really high resale, retail prices. I'm not going to sell it to you for a couple pennies. I'm like, I would barely make back the money I even spent on it. So anyway, there is that. Number three, um, this is what I think is the second most important and popular reason people send mobile offers to you and to me. Because in the past, people have accepted their mobile offers. Ding, da, right? The reason a person continues a behavior is because there's a reward system for it. So they're being rewarded by doing it. So a person will not repeatedly send a ton of lowball offers. If it's someone like, I'll go look at their profile and see like how long they had a profile, how long they've been on Poshmark. Cause I want to know, are they new and they just don't really know. And that's understandable. Um, and a lot of times it's not as people that even sell items themselves. That's irritating, right? Um, but people that just, they go and they do bargain shopping with different Poshmark closets, trying to get stuff for as cheap as they can. Maybe they're going to resell on eBay. Maybe they just want it. I don't know. But there's a reason they do it because they've sent lowball offers before. And maybe it's people that 
Um, I've seen it many times in Poshmark where they're like, you know, I just, I'm having a moving sale. I need to get rid of my inventory. Any offer you make will be accepted. I have seen that so many times on there. And hey, people are at different stages of their business model, um, their business lifestyle. Like maybe you need to unload all this product. Hey, we can all do whatever we want with our stores. So that's okay. But from my perspective, I have to share with you that that is actually um, the reason people are encouraged. And I'm, I blame nobody as far as resellers. I'm saying but for the buyer, the low baller, that is encouraging for them because when they see that, they're like, score, I got, you know, uh, Eileen Fisher, a brand new shirt for five bucks. Yes, I see these things on here. I see them in the stores and it blows my mind. I'm like, okay, the cost of our items is being driven down even more. Um, so when they get that often, you can go on eBay, you guys, and get some really high-end designer stuff for cheap. Now, I can't promise that it's in great condition, but I'm blown away when I see that stuff. I'm like, holy crap, you know? So they are able to do this successfully with resellers and give them these really low offers. And the people are just, they need to unload their products. So they're like, fine, yes, take it. That'll work. I just want to make the sale and get out of here. Um, I've seen that a lot with people. I've even seen some resellers be hit hard by the COVID, which is very unfortunate. I, my heart goes out to you if you're one of those people. Um, and then maybe lost a job or something or can't really pay mortgage. So they need to sell stuff at whatever they can just to be making a profit, have a profit coming in. I totally get that. I understand it. So, you know, that may be another reason that people were able to get items for super cheap. But I just want you to keep that in mind. There, that is um, what is encouraging low ballers. They're saying, hey, it's worked many times for me in the past. Why wouldn't I continue doing it? Maybe this person will say yes. If there's a really good chance she's going to say yes because they've said yes in the past, I'm going to keep that behavior pattern. So it actually makes a lot of sense. And I think that is what we see a lot. Now, if you counter offer with something you're way more comfortable with a better price range, I think they're going to go, oh, okay, well, then they're not going to, they're not going to work with me on this. They're not going to see eye to eye with me. Um, case in point, this is an example. Uh, so last weekend, speaking of lowball offers, uh, I had an offer on a Disney item. Um, it was a really cool, um, like 10 piece play set animation, not animation, um, like little action figures, really cool from the Disney parks, not the Disney store, brand new in the package. This sold for 35 or $40 in the Disney parks. Um, and I got my hands on, okay. Brand new. So I go to sell it. I know there's a lot of star Wars fans. I'm one of them. I'm a star Wars freak. Um, so I said, okay, let's put this up for sale. Well, it didn't sell at Christmas time, which is weird. I really thought it would, but it didn't. It'd be a great gift for a kiddo, but I knew a collector would see it and want it. So this gentleman messages me and says, um, I had it listed for, oh my gosh, how much did I have listed for? 30 or 35? I can't remember. It's a good price, really good price, 30, I think. He sends me an offer for $10. No. No, I'm not selling it to you brand new in the package, never opened for $10. On the photos that I listed, I always list a lot of photos of my items. Um, it showed the retail price tag from the Disney parks right on there. So he could see the value of it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I countered back and I said, how about we need it? I want to say it was $25. Um, and he waits a little bit and sends a counter offer back for $10 again. Now, at this point, you just got an attitude, okay? Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be generous to you and give you a good offer. And you come at me with the $10 again, in other words, $10 or leave it. And I said, decline. And I stopped the conversation because there's no point in me wasting my time. My time is valuable, just like yours is, wasting my energy, going back and forth with this guy. He's wanting to be a smart ass, basically, and I'm not going to play the game. So I... Just left it alone, declined, went on about my way. About two hours later, he sends me an offer for $25. <laughs> that was so funny. So I was like, okay, the offer that I had asked him for, he sent me the offer for it. He thought about it and was like, okay, she's clearly not biting. Okay, so, but I want this product and it's not something you can find anywhere. I mean, I could have asked her more for it, you know, really. 
Um, but he thought about it and I accepted his offer when he came back with the amount that I had suggested. So it worked out in the end, but I thought, okay, you're trying to, he's one of those bargain hunters that's trying to lowball everything. And it's just not going to fly with me. So there's that situation. Now, another thing you're going to see is like, kind of like what I just mentioned, number four, uh, they're bargain hunters. They go online and they source and source and source for this low amount they can pay on any item. Um, and those are the ones I think we all kind of don't care for and don't want to be dealing with. You know, it's like, look, don't come at me with your lowball offer. You see what it's listed for. Come at me with something that's appropriate and then we can talk. So I think there is a small percentage of those that source online, that scour the different platforms and just send the lowest offers they can to see if somebody will buy. It's kind of like going fishing, you know? So there are always those. We all run across them. Um, it just would explain a lot of that weird behavior that, like I said, send a counter offer and carry on about your day and don't think twice about it. That's what I do. Okay. Now, what is it that we are doing that could be promoting low ballers to shop in our stores and send us these ridiculous offers? What is it that you're doing that might be causing it? And I, it's not to say that anything you're doing is wrong or is bad, but is there any type of behavior we have as a reseller that would promote that? So one thing is, if you are a new reseller, that is going to encourage lowball offers. I can't even, <laughs> I mean, I know y'all know, we all started one at one place, right? Where we only had 10 items listed. And we were like, oh my gosh, is that all we sell for? I got so many lowball offers when I first started. I started with 10 items and said, why didn't all 10 items sell? You know, little did I know about the resale business that I needed to keep listing, keep listing, keep listing. But when somebody from one of those four categories sees your closet and you have 10 items listed, they're like, okay, they're new to this and they don't know how much value the item's worth. So I can probably get it for low if I send them an offer. So they don't know any better. Or is that they're saying, um, oh, maybe they just really need to get rid of things. They really need to um, move, move items. So maybe they'll take it because they only sell stuff with 10 items. They're only just selling personal items out of their closet. Um, so they're more likely to be like, I don't care. I just want to get rid of it. It's almost like donating to Goodwill. Okay. And there are people on Poshmark and the various platforms that are there for those reasons, literally just to sell some overflow clothes they have. They're really not in it as a reseller. Uh, so yes, if you're new to reselling, and you don't have a lot of items in your closet, there's a good chance you're going to get those low ball offers. Just counter it with something you're more comfortable with and carry on about your way. As you grow your business, those low ball offers will fall off to just be once in a blue moon type of thing. Um, it definitely got better once I had more items listed. And, and I talked to another reseller, this is when I had 10 items, and she said, it's just because you're new. People will always do that when you're a new reseller and they see you don't have a lot of stuff. People are going to try to get low offers with you. So don't take it personal, okay? All right. Now, another thing, and this is something that I did recently that I'm positive has started promoting more lowball offers. And that is if people see you drop prices in a lot of items in your closet, that draws attention because when, you know, every once in a while I'll get a notification, such and such just dropped their price by 13% of their item. Go get it for $5.99 or $3.99 shipping or whatever. So that makes me go and take a look at their closet, right? So it does work. <laughs> um, when people see you drop the price drastically, they take notice and they go, oh, she's got a bunch of like $6 items listed in her closet. She must be desperate to make a sale. And that's the signal it sends out to people. So in the last week, I've been, every week I go in and I start dropping to slashing prices on items that are sitting too long. I, you guys know I'm doing a quick flip method. I want things to move out quickly. So I will gradually lower prices of items um, so that I can make a quick sale. I think the lower the price, the quicker they flip. And it's so true, it's been working. As I'm lowering these prices, people are just coming in and doing direct buys and scooping them up. Thank you. Whew. Anyway, but the, the, the consequence of that is 
you're going to get these low ballers that see all these low prices listed in your closet, $6, $5, whatever. And they're going to say, oh, okay, they really need to make these, get these things and make sales. I'm going to make some low offers. And I think that definitely for me attracts low ballers. Um, so if you have some items listed low, it is going to pull people in that want to get low offers. Um, also, if they see you slashing a lot of prices, does that mean we shouldn't do that? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm going to continue doing it. It was a surprise when all of a sudden I start getting these offers. Um, so yeah, you know, do you do what works for your business model? Um, if you need to drop prices, you need to drop prices. Oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, another thing um, I want to mention is, and this is just my advice, again, counter offer make sure you send the counter offers. So, cause this could be a potential sale. Like I said, they could just be kind of filling you out to see how low you'll go, but they are willing to come up. And that is 75% of the time. That is the situation with me. I'll make a counter offer and they go, Oh, okay. Let me come closer to the price they want. Yesterday I made five counter offer sales. It was so bizarre. All on eBay people sent offers. I countered, we came to a conclusion, something was comfortable for both of us. And I made the sale. I was very happy. Now I could have got offended and said, uh, now are you kidding me? It's way too low. Like, what are you thinking? But I didn't, I didn't do that. I countered the offer. This is a potential sale. I'm going to follow through and it worked. So definitely, you know, counter number two, don't take it personal. It has nothing to do with you or your reseller abilities or your business sense it has nothing to do with you. It's just all behavior of the buyer. So don't let that reflect on you in any way. Do not be discouraged. Let me tell you today, you're doing a great job. Keep at it. It's not about you. You know how you do the breakup with John Doe and you say, it's not you, it's me. For real. Like, <laughs> it's you this time. It's not me. So don't take it personal at all. Just let it roll off and keep on keeping on doing what you do. Um, that's it. That's all I have. Like I said, counter and walk away and leave it and see what they can come back with if they do. And that's all. I, I just, I really needed to discuss these low wall offers. It's something that I don't see people talk about, but I really wanted to understand the psychology behind it, the mindset of the person that is sending these low wall offers. That's why I felt the necessity yesterday when I was doing those counter offers on eBay I, I was not mean in any way. I just, I'm really curious. Why did you think that was an appropriate price when you sent the offer? I just want to know, you know, and like I said, the responses were varied, but ultimately we came to a sale. It was awesome. It was a good thing. So you guys just hang in there. Keep this in mind when you're getting these, these low offers that, you know, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I'm just going to do my part and I'm going to walk away from it. So that being said, I hope your week is wonderful and I hope your sales are plentiful and I hope you hit the subscribe button when you leave and give us a thumbs up, would you? We'll see you next time. Bye.